Thank you. Good morning to all and thank you very much, ma'am. And thank you very much to the organizers to inviting me here. Today I am uh, discussing the osteoporosis and diabetes. So this is the untouched topic. Why it is important to discuss the osteoporosis and the diabetes? Because these are the risk factor for the osteoporosis and diabetes like older age, family history of osteoporosis, and genetics, menopause, certain drugs like glucocorticoids or anti-epileptics and other diseases like RA, COPD and type 1 diabetes and poor nutrition, lifestyle issues. But type 2 diabetes has not been included in as a risk factor for the osteoporosis. So there is need to discuss. As we all know that BMD increases or higher in the patient of diabetes, then why there is osteoporotic fracture higher in the diabetes? As we predict that patient of type 2 diabetes had higher BMD, then the age match control but in general also has greater weight. We all know that obesity has higher BMD and protect against the osteoporosis. So what is the, this is a paradox uh, that type 2 diabetes mellitus should protect against the osteoporosis. But is it true? So we can see here, this is the from uh, different studies that patient of type 2 diabetes had higher osteoporotic fracture, uh, especially those who are on insulin treatment as compared to the conventional treatment or OHA. But both patient of uh, uh, both the both the group of type, type 2 diabetes on insulin or OHA had higher BMD, but despite having higher BMD, having high fracture rate at the hip and other side. So how much difference should be in the T score? So T score difference found in this study was 0.3 to 0.8 higher than those controlled for the similar fracture risk. So can we use the T score uh, in this condition and diabetes to predict the fish fracture or not? So what we expect in diabetes fracture risk should be low as per the BMD and this is the only tool that we use day to day DEXA I think and fracture risk is high in actual. So this is the trend uh, from studies, the Stockish data and WHI studies, WH data from WHI women's health initiative studies that are all the fractures are higher in the patient with diabetes at the hip, foot, upper arm, ankle and spine as compared to the patient, those who are not suffering from the diabetes. So diabetes is an important factor for the osteoporosis, I think. What is the role of BMD? So uh, we know that there is uh, no correlation between the BMD and the fracture risk. So what is the importance? Can we go for the BMD in patient with diabetes? Yes, we should go because we don't have any other tools right now. So these are the uh, different studies. We can see here, uh, we can see here the patient of type 2 diabetes uh, having the higher fracture risk as at the similar T score at that constantly as the T score increases uh, osteoporotic osteoporosis severity increases the fracture increases and those who are taking insulin have higher fracture risk as compared to those who are not taking the insulin and OHAs. So what should be the exact difference between the BMD? Uh, uh, in that BMD or in T-score, when we compare the uh, diabetes, when we percolate the data on the T-score of a patient of diabetes. So I think the difference should be the 0.6. So the patient is having a T-score of minus 2. And for, diabetes, for osteoporosis, it should be minus 2.5. But actually, this should be in patient of diabetes minus 2.6. So patient have similar risk at higher BMD. So this should always be always considered and we should start the preventive therapies in patient of diabetes. So uh, is there any role of FREX score in the patient of diabetes because FREX score not included diabetes type 2 diabetes as a risk factor uh, in the calculation of the FREX, uh, FREX score risk factor. So these are the uh, factors included in the FREX like BMD at the femoral neck age more than 40 years, 40 to 90 years, gender, especially male or female, races, Caucasians, higher fracture rates, BMI, lower BMI, history of fracture last one year and past history of hip fracture, current smoking, steroid use and RA and alcohol use, but not included diabetes. So can we use FREX score in the calculation of osteoporosis, osteoporosis fracture in patient with diabetes? Yes, we can use, but for similar FREX, the risk of fracture is 10% higher, 10% higher in patient of diabetes for the similar risk factor, similar FREX score, risk of fracture is always 10% higher. For given FREX score, fracture risk is higher than the predicted 
in type 2 diabetes. So FRAX score underestimate the risk of fracture in patient of type 2 diabetes. So for a given BMD, fracture risk in diabetes is greater and for a given FRAX score, fracture risk in diabetes mellitus is greater. So there must be some factor that contribute for fracture. So what are the factor uh, that has been not captured by the BMD as well as the FRAX score? So why type 2 diabetes is there is increased fracture risk? So maybe certain factor may be there, maybe increased tendency to the fall, use of the jolidins, skeletal abnormalities and obesity or fat, maybe the marrow fat. So let's discuss one. So we all know that patient of type 2 diabetes has tendency to fall. And those who are especially on insulin have greater fall and greater fracture. Please remember, insulin does not increase the fracture risk. But we start insulin later in life when patient already developed the complication. That's why uh, these are the older data uh, before the 2015 and 16. So, uh, or later, uh, earlier, age, earlier we used the conventional insulins and NPH. So, higher risk of hypoglycemia, but not the newer one. So, as we can see here, patient on insulin has higher fracture as compared to the unconventional therapy. As the HbA1c goes down with insulin therapy, the fracture risk of fall increases, not the fracture. Risk of fall increases. So, we should be cautious here. So, against the, uh, so what is so what should not we do? We should not practice the high risk behavior in the patient, those who are on diabetes. So, what are the other factors other than fall? Is jolidins? We all know. Jolidins increase the marrow fat. Replace the osteocytes or osteoblasts with the adipocytes. We can see here in the men and the women, the men, the fracture risk not increased much by the jolidins, but we all know that postmenopausal women are increased risk of osteoporosis itself. That's why the diabetes, uh, jolidins increase risk twice. Risk is almost 50% higher. We can see 30% risk without jolidins as compared to the metformin. Risk is 60%. Risk become twice. In the patient with jolidins, abuse and risk is high in the lower limb fracture and lower limb fracture associated with 36% mortality and also upper limb fracture and but are not increased in the fracture of the spine because mostly affect the vertical bones. So as the, with the duration of diabetes and duration of jolidins, fracture continuously increase with jolidins with a rosiglitazone or vibrotazone access. Maybe. So we should be cautious, we should not use in the postmenopausal women, thyroidines or jolidines because increases the marrow adipocities and increases the marrow fat. So jolidines come in picture after 2002, but still the study showed that fracture is higher in the patient with type 2 diabetes and in the with osteoporosis. So there must be some other factor in the diabetes other than the jolidines. Maybe reduced bone turnover, abnormal biomechanics, reduced bone quality or fat. So we can see here that. Osteocalcin, this is a uh, marker of bone formation reduced in patients with type 2 diabetes. And also bone biopsy showed that low rate of bone formation or lower rate of remodeling from the different studies from 6 to 2006 to 2012. So also there is reduced surf cortical surface mineralization in the patient of diabetes as, the, as compared to the age matched control. So also there is reduced rate of mineralization. This is a picture, uh, a microscopic picture showed this is a control having normal bone and this is the type 2 patient having disorganized bone, disorganized marrow, mostly contain the adipocyte as compared to the osteocyte. So also there is problem with the bone morphology is there. So one factor is sclerotin. Sclerotin activate the osteoclast and osteoclast induces the osteoporosis as we all know. And it, it has been found that developed sclerotin is higher in patient with type 2 diabetes. So that's why may be a factor for increased osteoporosis in type 2 diabetes. So what happens to the turnover? We have seen the reduced turnover seen in the patient of type 2 diabetes. And what is the biomechanics by the BMD or CT scan or peripheral CT? We have seen that strength of the bone, particularly the hip joint, reduced in patient of type 2 diabetes. The strength ratio at the hip and to the bait is reduced in patient of type 2 diabetes despite having higher BMD by the different methodology. So what happens to the uh, turnover? We have seen the reduced turnover and bone abnormalities. And so what happens to the bone? What happens to the cortex? What happens to the trabeculae? And what happens to the matrix and the marrow fat, etc. 
So we can see here cortical porosity increased by 124% in the patient of type 2 diabetes. This is a picture of patient of type 2 diabetes. In the middle picture, there is increase in the first and second picture, increase in the cortical porosity in patient of type 2 diabetes. You can see here the periphery in the cortex last one, there is increase, reduce in the uh, mineralization. So increase risk of fracture seen patient of type 2 diabetes. So there is almost 2 to 3 percent difference in the mineralization in the patient and higher fracture risk uh, in, in the uh, radius in the patient of type 2 diabetes. So this is the patient with diabetes and this is the patient with fragile fracture. Patient of diabetes with fragile fracture having reduced cortical bone density, reduce the trabecular bone density too. There is change in the cortical bone captured by this is the high resolution peripheral CT. There is a reduced bone <coughs> mineralization. So what happens to the trabecular? So this is the TBS. For the trabecular morphology, we should calculate the trabecular bond score or TBS. How to do TBS? TBS nothing but we superimpose the pixel on the BMD pictures. That conventional DEXA. We superimpose the pixel on the DEXA. So we can see here, the here in the second picture, this is the patient having higher BMD. This is lower as the patient of type 2 diabetes having higher BMD. And this is the control. But we can see the TBS score here is 1.2 as compared to the 1.4. So TBS score is lower in patient with type 2 diabetes as compared to the uh, control patients. So in diabetes, higher BMD, but lower TBS, basically strength is lower. And TBS predict the fracture, fracture risk in patient of type 2 diabetes. And this is independent of the BMD. So hazard ratio is almost 1.27. TBS captured lower portion of the diabetes associated fracture than the BMD. So TBS can be used to assess the fracture risk in postmenopause abdomen and diabetes, but till uh, now we don't have the no RCT or data regarding the that. So there is reduced bone turnover, abnormal biomechanics, and reduced bone quality B, as we have seen in the both cortex and both in the trabeculae. So reduced bone quality. So what happens to the matrix? As we all know that there is uh, reduced remodeling, reduced number of osteocytes, and what happens to the collagen? This is a CML, carboxymethyl lysine, increase in the patient of type 2 diabetes and pentocytins. These are the ages, and these accumulate in the collagen, and this organized. So accumulation with the age and hyperglycemia, and increase the brittleness and slow bone turnover. So decreased bone instant depends on the BMD, independent of the BMD. What happens to the fat? We all know that's, that the, as age, is, age increases, increase in the adiposity is there. So what is the link between the age and the osteoporosis? And what we have read earlier, we have read earlier that fat is good for bone. But uh, day by day concept is changing. Low, we all know that low body weight is a risk factor for osteoporosis or fracture risk. Maybe the low IgF1 level or etc. or lower lean mass may be the factor or poor nutrition may be the factor. Higher weight has been associated with the higher BMD and lower fracture risk, as we all know. And what is fat is the source of estrogen, and estrogen is protective for bone. We all know. And higher insulin level may be higher insulin level may be positive factor, as we know. The patient with insulin resistance and earlier patient early phase of diabetes having higher BMD as compared to the later onset of uh, increased duration of uh, diabetes. Extra padding of fat help to lessen the impact of fall. But what happens? What is the change? Fat and bones. So what is the dogma? So this is the reversal of the earlier we thought. Fat can induce the artifact in the DEXA. And measurement given by falsely elevated BMD, comorbidities such as diabetes and vitamin D deficiency often present with the obesity, we all know. And women with earlier menopause and menopause and the men with lower testosterone both are obese. Marrow fat has fewer osteoblasts and increased incidence of fall. So low body weight as well as higher body weight both are risky and both are both promote the fracture. So body weight should be the ideal. So as we grow older, the osteoblast number of osteoblasts reduces and osteocytes, osteoadipocytes increases. And this is the bone marrow of younger and older. We can see in the older marrow of older patient, there is an increased number of adipocytes. So what are the factors that included the marrow adipocytes? Aging, diabetes, both type 1 and type 2. Earlier type 2 diabetes was not included. Menopause, anorexia nervosa use of glucocorticoid and use of zolidins. So let's summarize me and so fracture risk is greater ac accounting for BMD than the non-clinical risk factor. 
contributing factor include falls and jollidines and more important contributing factor is abnormality in bone quality and the obesity also. Apply standard guidelines for fracture prevention and T-score and fracs predict the underestimate the risk of fracture and intensive glycemic control is important in the all stage of the diabetes. So I think two factors should be included, diabetes and obesity as a risk factor for obesity. So diabetes is bad for bones, obesity is bad for bones and both are doubly bad for bones. Diabetes and bone not a very sweet problem and obesity make it worse. Thank you very much for patient hearing.